Life buoys are made of buoyant material and are brightly colored and ring-shaped. They are placed at strategic locations around the ship to ensure easy access in an emergency. Life buoys are required to be stowed in such a way so as to be capable of being easily cast loose and not permanently secured. They are to be located on each side of the ship and are to be fitted with a buoyant line not less than twice the height at which it is stowed. They are also fitted with retro-reflective tapes for visibility. The name and port of registry of the ship is to be stenciled on both sides of the life buoy. At least 50% of the total number of life buoys should be provided with self-igniting lights and two of these should be provided with self-activating smoke signals. The specifications of life buoys are Outer diameter shall not be more than 800 millimeters, 2.6 feet. Inner diameter shall not be less than 400 millimeters, 1.3 feet. Support capacity of 14.5 kilograms, 32 pounds, of iron in fresh water for a period of 24 hours. Mass of 2.5 kilograms, 5.5 pounds or more. Fire resistant for a period of 2 seconds. Sustain a drop from varied heights above the waterline in the lightest seagoing condition or 30 meters, 900 feet. Grab line of length not less than 4 times the outer diameter of the buoy. Life jackets are designed to be worn by the ship's crew before abandoning the ship. They are made with the objective of assisting a person keep his head above the water while floating. They are colored brightly and are stenciled with the name of the ship and the port of registry. They are provided for every adult on board and also include provisions for every child and infant on board, equal to 10% of the crew or greater. Life jackets are provided for watch crew and for use at remotely located survival craft stations. They are placed at accessible locations and are marked with the weight or height or both and are indicated with child or infant symbols. The requirements of life jackets include the following. Loss of buoyancy is not more than 5% after submersion in fresh water for more than 24 hours. Fitted with a whistle. Fitted with a white light of luminous intensity not less than 0.75 candela, effective for a period of at least 8 hours. Life jacket sizing criteria. Immersion suits are designed to help reduce the loss of body heat. They are provided for every person on board a cargo ship. Immersion suits are provided at places of work and in watch keeping areas located away from the immersion suit storage area. They are stored in readily accessible and clearly marked locations. The requirements of immersion suits include the following. Capable of being unpacked and donned without assistance within two minutes. Fire resistant for at least a period of two seconds. Loss of buoyancy not more than 5% after submersion in fresh water for more than 24 hours. Cover the whole body with the exception of the face. Covering for the hands and head may be provided by separate gloves and a hood, 
permanently attached to the suit. Ability to sustain a jump from a height not less than 4.5 meters 13 feet, into the water without damaging or dislodging the immersion suit. Thermal protective aids are designed as a suit or a bag made of waterproof material having low thermal conductance. They are made of durable and insulating material and are designed to cover the wearer's entire body except for the area of the mouth, nose, and eyes. Thermal protective aids are colored brightly to enable easy detection. They are provided with gloves that facilitate the wearer to close and open the zipper or carry out other tasks. The requirements of thermal protective aids include the following. Thermal conductance not to be more than 7,800 watts per square meter per Kelvin, W over M squared K. Capable of being donned without the assistance in a rescue boat or in a survival craft. Does not hinder the swimming capability of the wearer. Capable of being removed in water in not more than two minutes. Effective in temperatures between minus 30 degrees Celsius to plus 20 degrees Celsius. Marked with the manufacturer's name and instructions for use. GMDSS approved ships are required to carry the following as a minimum requirement. Three portable VHF two-way radio telephones. Two search and rescue transponders. One EPIRB operating on 406 megahertz. Survivors should carry a GMDSS approved VHF two-way radio telephone apparatus. Persons leading the boat stations should carry radios along with spare batteries. Nickel cadmium batteries on the radio set can be recharged after use on board. Spare batteries made of lithium for use in case of an emergency. Lithium batteries cannot be charged. SART a search and rescue radar transponder, SART, is stowed on a mounting bracket on each side of the bridge. The SART should be carried in the survival craft. It indicates the location of the survival craft to any ship in the immediate vicinity. When the SART is switched on, it goes on to the standby mode. Once triggered, it can be identified by 12 blips on the radar screen. When viewed from a distance within one nautical mile, the blips turn into concentric rings on the radar screen. The detecting range of the SART improves with height. The SART is powered by a battery. It has a test switch to check its functionality. The battery has a life of about three to four years. Operating and testing instructions are marked on the exterior of the SART. EPIRB A satellite emergency position indicating radio beacon EPIRB should be carried on all seagoing ships of 300 gross tons and over. The EPIRB transmits a distress alert through a polar orbiting satellite or by satellites operating in the geostationary INMARSAT coverage. An EPIRB transmits a distress call when activated 
to rescue coordination centers through local user terminals. Line Throwing Apparatus A line throwing apparatus is specifically designed to help deploy a buoyant line from the ship to the shore or to another ship. A line throwing apparatus should be capable of throwing a line with reasonable accuracy. It should have at least four projectiles and four lines. Each projectile should be able to carry a line of at least 230 meters, 750 feet in length. Each line should have a breaking strength of not less than 2 kilo newtons. Operating instructions are printed on the external part of the apparatus. The entire assembly is housed inside a water-resistant casing. Signaling Equipment Pyrotechnics are a part of the ship's distress signaling equipment. They are used to attract the attention of ships in the vicinity besides helping locate survivors. Pyrotechnics consists of rocket parachute flares, hand flares, and buoyant smoke floats. Each lifeboat and life raft should carry four rocket parachute flares, six hand flares, and two buoyant smoke signals. Rocket Parachute Flares The ship is also to carry 12 rocket parachute flares, which form part of the ship's distress signals. Rocket Parachute Flares should be housed within a water-resistant container. The operating instructions should be printed on the container. The design of the rocket parachute flare should not cause any discomfort to the person holding it. When fired vertically, the rocket should reach an altitude of at least 300 meters, 984 feet. When the rocket is at its top, it releases a parachute flare of a bright red color with a luminous intensity of 30,000 candelas or more for at least 40 seconds. The rate of descent of the flare should not be more than 5 meters, 16.4 feet, per second and should not cause harm to the parachute fittings. Hand Flares Hand flares should be housed within a water-resistant casing. The instructions should be written on the casing. The ignition of the flare should be self-contained and should not cause any discomfort to the person holding the casing and the survival craft. When ignited, the hand flare should burn in a bright red color with a luminous intensity of 15,000 candelas or more for at least one minute. It should continue to burn for 10 seconds when immersed in 100 millimeters, 0.33 feet of water. Buoyant Smoke Floats Buoyant smoke floats should be housed within a water-resistant casing. The operating instructions should be written on the casing. When operated, the smoke float should emit a highly visible colored smoke for at least three minutes. It should not ignite explosively. Smoke floats should continue to emit smoke when submerged in 100 millimeters, 0.33 feet of water for 10 seconds. It should not be swamped in a seaway. Other signaling equipment. Other signaling equipment in survival crafts includes one waterproof electric torch and a daylight signaling mirror. The electric torch should be suitable for Morse signaling. It should have one set of spare batteries and one spare bulb. 
The daylight signaling mirror should be provided with instructions on its use. It should be capable of signaling to the ships and aircrafts in the vicinity.